you so much for, for jumping on. Um, no worries. Let's dive straight in. How's the boarding component shape uh, your training philosophy? Um, so, like a little bit of background is so we have uh, I'm at Geelong Grammar School. We've got we've got 600 boarders here. Who, you know, this is their home. This is where they live. So our students can come in the mornings before school, so 6:30 through 7:30 lunch times and then after school 3.30 through 6. So majority of our students, they're, they're choosing to come and train. It's not part of a structured program. It's part of their downtime. Like it's, it's a very structured environment when you've got 600 students living together. It has to be. Um, and then the, the gym is a place where they can come and have a bit of their own time, a bit of autonomy and a bit of – it's one of the few choices that they have to do to, to come and, and train with us. And then it just shows about how we go with our programming and the environment we try and create. And, and what's their access like with the gym for, for those mm -hmm. that aren't aware of the, the program there? So it must be supervised. So, so there must yeah. be either myself or another coach uh, on duty for students to use it. And that's just a safety thing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so every morning, every lunchtime, after school, uh, and a couple of select times over the weekend. And they have access to that uh, just like a someone listening might have an access to a fitness first membership it you know it's it's their gym to use as, as they place yeah. it yeah so, so this is their home they, they live here this is their uh yeah, they play sport here they eat here and the gym is we have a pool facility as well but it's just another way that we can you know basically keep students busy um because again uh if they're not busy then we've that's when problems probably arise yeah yeah for sure and uh, your training philosophy, mate, what's the difference between training poorly for little result and training poorly potentially resulting in injury? Yeah, I think the fact that um, I think why we're all in this business is because we got passionate about training and, and somewhere along the line, we really developed a passion to train and understand how to train and, and to learn about it. Um, and I reckon that's, that's the key to long-term athletic development is the long-term component. Um, so what we really like to do and, and we try and um, promote within our facility is that, that students come back. So I sort of often use the analogy, I don't mind if people come in and do 45 minutes of bicep curls um, because at least they're coming in. And then that'll allow me to build a relationship and then by that second, third, fourth week of them coming in, then I've had a chance to, to build a relationship, you know, try and push a... Um, a different way of training forward for them. And then we, we gradually get them, especially doing lowers. The, the, the lower body is the one we really try and push push the most. Um, mm -hmm. But then it's a, they've got skin in the game because it's their choosing to do the program they want to do. Yeah, but if they're not coming back, if I um, go too hard with, with my theories or with my thoughts on what they should be doing and, and they don't come back, then I can't, I can't shape them or I can't put my passion for training onto them. What are some key areas that you try and, I guess, change with the student mindset when it comes to, in relation to their programming? Well, we, we can, um, we did just try and outline results. And it only takes you to really impact on one or two students and, and they'll tell their mates and then they'll tell their mates and then they'll come and ask you questions. So I think if your students are asking you questions and they value your input and they value your response, because um, there, there's a lot of information available and there's a lot of programs that, that are out there. Um, so, so what I'm trying to do is, again, build that relationship, let them know that I've got their interests at heart um, and that, that hopefully that the, the advice that I'm giving them makes them better because if my advice makes them better, then they'll come back and ask me another question. And as long as I'm giving them answers that I think will make them better, then generally that's, uh, you know, they'll keep asking questions and take that on board. And for strength conditioning coaches working in the school setting, what uh, what are some common mistakes that you've seen uh, potentially in early days while you're um, getting more experience in the in the environment? I think you've got to have have your theory and understand that it, at its at its true heart, like for high school um, S and C, it's it's a pretty basic formula of, of your strength training. We're just trying to give them a a pretty like those underlying principles of strength. So, for instance, I just like them to be able to squat, hinge, single leg. Um, you know, like some for, some form of uh, a vertical power coordination in there, like a dumbbell snatch, but um, you don't need to reinvent things. I think there's the younger you are, the more fancy you try and make your programming. Um, but 
if, if somebody wants to squat, front squat, goblet squat, deadlift, trap bar deadlift, it's uh, the true heart of it is it's still a lower body, double leg sort of compound leg strength movement. Um, but safety is a key aspect. If they're doing it safely, um, I, I sort of give them a give them a fair rein to to, um, to have a, have the choice of how they want to get the the outcome that, that ideally I want to shape them towards.